Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. So in this video, I want to take a look at a physics one problem dealing with rotation. So first we have this system here. We have a cylinder attached to a rope is this mass. So we have it at a height initial that we don't know and everything is at rest in this system. So here, nothing is moving. And so and now in this system, a moment later, all right, we have the same cylinder and now it's rotating down and the mass is gonna fall at some velocity. We're also gonna have some angular velocity from the actual cylinder spinning. So we have two things going on. We have the velocity of the mass that's falling and we have the velocity, the angular velocity of the entire cylinder that's turning, okay? So before we take a look at the problem. Let's go over here, right, before we start section, and let's take a look at some things that we need to know. Okay, so this circle here represents um, an arc length. It's gonna represent an arc length over here. So here, we're gonna have a length out of R, right? And here we have theta, and this here represents an arc length, this piece here. Okay, so we're gonna represent that by S. That's gonna equal R theta, right? So I'm gonna label my S, or you can, you can just understand that S is like X, it's just a position. So if I take the derivative of S, right, I'm gonna have DS DT. And if I do take the derivative of the other side, R stays the same, but I'm gonna have D theta DT. And so D, theta dt is omega, r stays the same, and this right here is velocity. Okay, so this is the term that we're interested in. So our angular velocity, right? And we're gonna rearrange for omega, that's gonna be v over r. So this is what we're looking for, this term right here, angular velocity. And then also, we need to know uh, moment of inertia. So moment of inertia, right, for a cylinder is I equal to one half big M because the mass of the cylinder is big M, the mass of the little box is little M, and radius squared. Okay, perfect. So now let's begin. Okay, so let's first use the conservation of energy. So now we begin and we're gonna use conservation of energy. Okay, so what does that tell us? We have the energy initial. So we have the kinetic energy initial, right, denoted by one, plus the potential energy initial equal to the kinetic energy final plus the potential energy final. Okay, so this is everything that we need for this problem, okay? But like you can see, I did the K2 in orange because the K2, we need to note that it's different. Okay, what does it represent? So K2, or any K, which is the kinetic energy, is one half mv squared, right? And I'm gonna denote velocity two, that's final velocity. And so there's two things going on here with velocity. We have the velocity of the box or the block going down, and then we also have rotational velocity from the cylinder. Okay, so we need to write K2 as, okay, so I'm just gonna write it over here. So K2 is gonna equal one half mv squared, right? This is for the block. Translational motion, right? Cause it's going up and down. And then plus we have one half I omega squared. 
This is for the cylinder. And that's rotational. So this is translational motion. This is rotational motion. And both of them need to be included when we're talking about this system and this system here is working together. Okay, so let's replace these two values in here. And we're gonna have, so I'm gonna re, I'm just gonna open these up and write them out how they are. So K1 is gonna be one half MV squared, one plus MGH, one is initial height, equals K2 is all of this. Okay, so one half MV2 plus one half I omega squared. And then finally we have our potential energy final. So potential energy MGH2. Okay, so we're interested in finding the velocity right before it hits the ground, like something like right there. Okay, not when it hits the ground because then velocity final would be zero. So something like right there. Okay, so if we look at velocity initial, the block started at rest. Okay, so these are always clue words. And so here, this is zero, right? We do have an initial height, which is here. We'll put H1. And velocity final is what we're looking for. Okay, we can switch this to look like something that we are gonna recognize. Or better, better put, we need to put variables in all of this equation that we can work with because we don't know the you know i or we don't know omega so we can change them and then we have mg h final and so the final height we're going to estimate to be zero right because it's going to be right before the ground but for the purposes of finding our velocity final before it hits we can est estimate this to be zero okay so now let's take a look at what we have first let's change this problem here okay we're gonna write one half okay i is equal to one half mr squared so we have one half big m r squared that's only for i and now for omega over here we derived omega equals velocity over the radius Okay, so we're gonna do omega is gonna be velocity, and that's final, All right? So that's two over r squared, because we want we want the final velocity, and so this term here is only for this. All right, and so then let's keep everything else as it is. We have one half m v squared. And here we have MGH1. All right, so now let's solve for velocity final. So first we can also do one more thing. Um, actually, no, so this is a different mass than this one and this one. So these are little m's and this is a big m. So let me clarify that. These are little m's with the little you know, line extending and th this is just big m. With nothing okay so we have r squared r squared which cancel and this v2 becomes squared so let's clear this up right here we have plus one half and one half is going to be one over four we have big m and we have v2 squared and then over here we have one half little m v2 squared okay we still have m g h1 okay so for this problem we're just we want to write an expression for the final velocity all right and so let's go ahead and solve this for v2 so let's move this up a little bit okay so now let's see we have big m little m let's pull out a v squared from this term I'm gonna move everything over to here. So let's work in this space here now. All right, so from these two terms, I wanna pull out a V 
squared. So I'm gonna leave this side alone. So I'm gonna write MGH1. So from this side here, I'm gonna take out a V final squared. So V final squared. And left inside this side, I have one half little m. And this side I have left one over four big M. Okay. Now let's take out, we could take out a one half. Okay, and when I take out the one half, I wanna multiply it to this side over here. So, or we can just right away divide everything here to the other side, make it easier for ourselves. Okay, so I'm gonna have MGH1 over one half little m plus one fourth big M, right? So I move this to the bottom of this term and I have V2 squared left, okay? And let's see. So if I wanna rearrange this side here, I can pull out an M over two right you just need a little bit more algebra to kind of understand this next step but you can just write a square root on top of this and you're done and so i can write here i'm gonna go from here to here now okay i can write v2 is equal to the square root right i'm gonna square root everything mgh1 over on the bottom we have one half little m plus one over four big m okay and that's your answer that you can keep it right there if you want to simplify it a little more okay you can also write v squared so from this bottom term if i pull out an m over two right when i flip that up over here i'm gonna cancel out this m and have a two on top and here I'll show you now what we're gonna get. So on top, we're gonna get, well, first of all, we're gonna have the square root always. On top, we're gonna have two G H one. Okay, and the bottom, since we pulled out the M over two, we just have one plus, now we have M over two little m. Okay, just some, just some extra algebra, you don't need it, but if you wanna simplify it, It'll, it could also be seen as this, if, maybe if it's like a multiple choice question or something. So these two are the same. All right. So these two are the same. And then finally, well, if we wanna get our angular velocity, so the final angular speed of the cylinder, right? So this omega represents the angular speed of the cylinder. And we have here omega. So this is for now the final part we have here omega is equal to V over R. And so what we would do is just write this velocity here, right? This velocity here into here, and we have our omega. And so I'm running out of room, so I don't wanna write it, but all you would do is put this V into here, and you'd have your angular velocity for your cylinder. And then this V here represents the speed of the box right before it hits the ground. Okay, so you have these two answers here. You got this one here for the cylinder, and this one here is for the box, or this one here, whichever one you guys wanna write, okay?